Welcome everybody. It is Thursday, October 20th. Man alive, where did the month go? I'm Andrea. I am one of our Office Hours co-hosts and Hi, I'm Victoria. And I'm Garrett. And special extra co-host with us today is special extra extra guest Kristen. Thanks for Hi. inviting me. <clears throat> Yeah, today we are um, talking about everything uh, announced from Ignite that's related to Microsoft 365. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, actually, I'm going to allow Kristen to go ahead and share her screen. She's going to kick us off with some of these Surface announcements. Thank you very much, Garrett. I will try to be as quick as possible, and I will present in Teams so I can do this correctly yeah. here. Oh, gosh. I apologize for the delay real quick here. I was doing this earlier and thought I was being really awesome and had them preloaded and then I went and added more. So I'm very excited yeah. about the Surface announcements. Huge announcements. Yeah. It was such a cool demo live. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So um, because I only have like, I'm going to try to keep it real quick and short and sweet and to the point three minutes. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I am um, a Surface specialist on the, on the EDU team. I actually look after all of higher education strategy. So I love to join you guys and listen to what you guys are, are talking about. Um, but I want to talk specifically about what happened at launch earlier this week. If you're not a Surface fan boy or girl or fan person, um, I hopefully I'll make you one after this call. Um, but three big things came out of the call that stuck at or that at our launch rather this week that stuck out to me. And as I'm talking to my teammates and kind of hearing the, the buzz of everything, um, these three things are repeated over and over again. Um, our continued commitment to innovation. We are continuing to push the envelope on um, innovative new designs um, all the way down to the chip level itself. Um, and I will talk about that in just a second with the introduction of the NPU um, and that being exclusive to Surface right now. And it's just phenomenal. And that goes into Garrett's mention of, or actually all of y'all's mention to the um, the demos that you guys saw with the hair dryer. <laughs> we keep hearing about this over and over again. We're going to do hair dryer demos now on from now on. Um, I will also highlight accessibility improvements. Um, we are doing some amazing things around accessibility, obviously with Microsoft on a whole. Um, but just what we're doing specific to Surface and then the other partners that we are working with to create our adaptive um, accessories. There's some really cool things that are going on and I'll share some 3D printing um, ideas in just a second that you could actually, for those of you with 3D printers, you could create your own uh, Surface accessories, which is pretty cool. Um, and then the third thing is repairability and our commitment to repairability. If you've heard me talk about Surface, in the past, when we know that's been a pain point for customers because it's been such a premium experience for our customers, um, our devices have only increased over the years in terms of repairability. This launch, every single device that we that we launched um, has increased. In fact, all all parts repairable. Um, and then going forward, I can't put this in writing, but I'm pretty darn sure that going forward, all of our devices will then also be repairable and have spare parts that you can then purchase to repair our devices. That's a huge, huge change um, from where we've been in the past. Um, so I have actually a link that I can share with you guys on that. But double check, I'm, I don't do it justice. If you want, please watch that Surface Ignite recap in eight minutes. That, that goes through the entire video and then does the hairdryer demo in there. Um, and then we also have the launch blog post there too. I will highlight real quickly, actually it's on this slide, but I wanna show you in our portfolio, um, if I go through here real quick. Um, this is our new updated portfolio. I have starred the three new devices um, and it's three asterisk devices actually because it's three plus because um, Surface Pro 9, we actually have two flavors now. We have combined, um, our Pro 9 experience with Surface Pro X. So we have one device now that provides 5G connectivity, um, and that is our awesome NPU device. That is our awesome um, just AI built in. Um, we've also launched, I know I'm going over on time, so I'm just going to be real quick. I just want to make sure you guys know about Surface Laptop 5. We are now in the fifth iteration of laptop. I personally, I, I don't like to pick favorite devices, but the 15 inch 
laptop is probably one of my favorite devices of all time just because it's so big and so beautiful and yet so portable. Um, so just the improvements on battery life alone on that device and next gen um, processors on that. We've updated all of our processors, so looking for awesome performance there. We brought back Studio, guys. We're now with Studio 2 Plus, and I know that sounds funny from a naming convention, um, but that only means that we're committed to the Studio uh, form factor. So for those of you who have loved Studio, again, another favorite device of mine, um, make sure you check that out. Um, if you have questions about the AI stuff specifically, let me know. I'm happy to talk more about what the what an MPU actually is. You guys are far smarter than I am. I, I hear you guys talk on these calls all the time, so you've probably already done all the research on this, but it's built in specifically now to provide all of those unique opportunities into Surface that we expect from um, collaboration and from our from our team's calls to, to be very specific. Um, I told you I talk about the adaptability. There's the link to Shapeways 3D printing. You can actually print 3D print now those um, adaptive pieces to go specifically even on our pens. So Classroom Pen 2 has been around for a minute, but now we actually have adaptive kits that we can actually print and put on. Um, students love those. We used to have the big bulky plastic pieces that you could put or actually the, the pens or pencils themselves. Imagine having your own personalized digital inking um, adaptive piece for your pen. And then the last thing is the customer self repair piece. There's a link in there to the to the surface service guides. Even has the exact SKUs that you can order the pieces and the parts. So if you have questions about that, about for repairability, either seek me out or if you know who your surface specialist is, seek them out. Um, this is huge. This is going to make a huge difference going forward, especially in higher education. Um, and I have to call out real quickly um, our good friends at UF. Um, Dwayne, I had to put this in there, Dwayne and Joe both, um, because this was in our launch deck internally. So the, the story for the University of Florida um, putting a surface in space was, was in our launch deck, and I thought that was a really big uh, compliment to the work that they did there. So sorry, I went way over time. I'm going to stop now. <laughs> Any quick questions, Andrea? You had did you have your hand raised? No, I was trying to give thumbs up, and I was oh, okay, cool. too much. And I'm just awesome. excited. I'll check to in the to chat too. <laughs> print accessories in purple, like right? that's gonna yes. happen, right? Oh, absolutely, can't wait. <laughs> All right, passing it Thank off you, now. Thank you, Kristen. I'll stop sharing. Thank you. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we are going to continue on some of these announcements at Ignite. We've tried to summarize as best we can, really focusing on the Microsoft 365 portion, but there was just so much. Um, so we may end up making this two parts. Uh, we'll see how far we can get today. Um, the portions that I did want to mention um, was that we are covering these announcements. What we're not covering is timing or licensing. So we've had a lot of big announcements and there's still a lot of questions that we don't know. Um, so things like Teams Premium that we'll talk about, things like that, um, those we don't have edgy pricing or anything like that. So we're not gonna get into that, um, but we're gonna talk about what has, um, what we've announced as far as features wise. So I'm gonna turn it over to Andrea to start us off with Teams. Oh, fantastic. I'm like looking for the right slide. Here we go. Uh, super excited. I'm going to run through these really fast. Um, and the video will play while I talk about it, but the channels are being completely reimagined. Um, I don't know how I excited I am about this yet, just because I've gotten so used to the fact that new posts are at the bottom, but they are moving to the top of the page. And now you can actually pin things to the top of the page, which is really exciting. You're going to be able to have uh, unique banners uh, for every channel. I'm excited about that because, uh, you know, I love a good graphic. And uh, there's lots more coming directly to the channels themselves. Hey, Andrea, or really quick, are you what slide do you see? Yeah, uh, I, I still see the office hours form. Do you see the? Changes? I took control and I navigated to nine or to eight to get started. Let me, I'm going to take uh, control. We see one. Sorry about this, guys. Yeah. Here we go. Do you see it now? I just see office yes. hours now. I see nine now. 
Yeah, Adrian, we can see you, slide uh, nine. Can you see the sync with presenter? Nope, I don't have that option. But if you say you're on slide nine, let's go to 10. And I, you just tell okay. me when you change the slide and I will go from the I changed the slide. I got you. <laughs> so yeah. now we're on slide 10. Um, at mention, um, you can now at mention the word everyone and it will uh, notify everybody. But I just want to warn everybody, at mentions can really cause notification fatigue. So if you're going to use at mention in the chat or in a channel, make sure that you really want to send everybody that notification uh, to everybody in that conversation, especially if it's a big one. All right, next slide. This is exciting. We saw some great power apps that did this earlier and now it's gonna be baked right in. You can mark where you're working from, mostly so people know if you're in the building or if you're out of the building. I don't think of this as big brother watching. I think of it of, I want Garrett to know I'm in the office and he can swing by and say hi, or uh, he can we can say, hey, or we're both here, let's have lunch, that kind of thing. But it really helps to know where your teammates are. And so definitely um, excited to see something along those lines available so I don't have to guess at it. I like to be able to find information on my own and not bother others or guess. So great information. All right, 12, uh, slide 12. Super excited about this. I have one professor that absolutely can't wait for this. He works with campuses all across the country, but you can now assign seats in together mode. Um, I haven't seen it yet or gotten to try it, but I think this is going to be phenomenal. And it's also going to be great for our K-12 space. So you can actually assign seats. Uh, pretty exciting. All right, moving on to slide 13. You're going to see some updates into PowerPoint Live. Those live captions that you can turn on when you go to the more uh, dots can now be in other languages, um, meaning it will caption in another language, just like PowerPoint would do. You can now do that in PowerPoint Live inside of Teams. You can go to dark mode or high contrast mode with that PowerPoint. And I think the best one is magnifier because I can't tell you how often somebody presents something in PowerPoint and I can't read it. Um, just as my little reminder, remember, no more than 49 words on a slide, people. You've got to be able to read it. OK, I digress. Uh, next slide, slide 14. Um, is Excel live? Um, I love Excel and all of its power, but I can tell you the fact that we're all going to be able to live collaborate on one makes me a little nervous and super excited. Um, but that's you're going to be able to uh, share just like you would share a whiteboard. You can add and collaborate right inside of Teams. Super exciting. And this next one on 15, I think has been my favorite today because all of my team members have started to use this internally as they're doing some testing, but creating your uh, avatar. Um, you know, when you're having a rough week and don't want to do your hair and makeup or don't want to be on camera, this is a great alternative. And as an educator myself, I love to be able to see folks and have those nonverbal communications, but being on camera all day can be exhausting. So here's another option where it's kind of that happy in between. You can provide that nonverbal communication with the head nods and, and the different things um, without actually being on camera. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that uh, come to life. I did talk with Max um, this morning. He was demoing it for me and it's all professional. Nobody is going to be a cat or a bunny or an ear of corn. Um, all of your options here in Mesh are going to be um, human-like um, for you to be able to create them uh, on your, to, to be your resemblance. Um, and you will get three separate avatars. So you can kind of like Bitmoji life it, um, have different outfits and hairstyles and such. Um, on slide 16, uh, we're going to continue to work on that uh, metaverse experience and being able to collaborate with others. This is coming in the future, and you're going to be able to take those avatars um, from Mesh right in here and collaborate and work right in a Teams meeting, and you're going to have your little name over it, which is going to be great. Um, and I think that wraps up my section. Hopefully now you're seeing slide 17. I'm not, but Victoria can take it from here. All right. Thanks, Andrea. All right. I think that I took control. I Meetings, did. devices, and, and phones. Let's see. Slide 18. Are we there? Awesome. 
All right, so IntelliFrame, uh, this has a lot to do with, I think we've heard about the front row feature. So obviously you see these people in a conference room and it can actually kind of subdivide their video stream um, so that everybody kind of gets that same video real estate to kind of lessen the divide between working from home um, and then being right there in the office as well. Um, so Cisco, they're going to start making uh, certified Microsoft Teams devices. So this is really helpful specifically again in the conference room space. If all of your rooms are outfitted with uh, Cisco equipment, uh, we are making efforts to actually have those devices be compliant with Teams. Um, so previously you would have to do either CVI, which can be very um, expensive partner integration to make these devices work with Teams rooms, um, or you could um, do the the direct guest join uh, which doesn't isn't always as feature rich so there's quite a few devices that are already going to be team certified but they're going to uh, continue to increase that portfolio yeah. awesome um i'm going to for the sake of time go past this and only stick to the things that have pictures um teams phone <laughs> mobile um, overview so this is connected to operator connect um, which, you know, I, I think we've talked about on here a little bit, but being able to focus on having that mobile experience on your phone, having Teams, your mobile device actually be your work phone device without actually having to give out devices, but by simply having that application and capability on your mobile phone, um, taking telephony needs on the go. Uh, SIP gateway for overhead paging. So right now, if you want to use overhead paging, then usually you're going to have to have some integration using direct routing. Um, we have various partners that that can help out with this. SIP gateway allows you to utilize a lot of your older equipment um, and still have it be maintained or managed by the team's environment. Um, and so now SIP gateway is going beyond just your desk phone, but into the overhead paging space as well with, I believe, Algo um, solutions. More words here uh, that I'm going to not focus on. I guess the one cool thing is um, more capabilities coming out with uh, SBA, the survivable branch appliance. Um, so again, expanding our capability as far as what happens. A lot of people are scared to go to a cloud first model for telephony for emergency situations. Uh, what happens if, you know, you know, you can't connect to teams or something of that nature. So uh, we're now designing those kind of failover solutions um, so that people feel more comfortable with cloud based solutions. CRM integration is also really cool. Um, and so being able to now, if you're receiving calls from individuals and being able to integrate with whatever CRM you use to have patient data or customer profile information come up as soon as those calls are coming in is something that we're working on as well. Teams Premium, um, I saw some um, some not happy messages. Dwayne, I hear you um, in the chat. So lots of cool features coming out with Teams Premium. One of the big ones that I think a lot of people have highlighted or Dwayne highlighted in the chat was the translation, uh, live translation with the live captioning that happens um, in a meeting. And so with that, and I don't even know if that's, oh gosh, okay. Um, yeah, so with that as Dwayne, pointed out that's going to be a, a Teams premium feature. I know a lot of you are asking, well, we've seen that it's going to cost more as an add on. We don't know what that will actually look like for education. We don't know um, if that's going to be an automatic add on or if it is an add on, um, if it's going to be a, a cheaper cost than it would be for everyone else. So TBD on that, that this wouldn't even be GA or that licensing structure wouldn't really be GA until February likely. Um, but as you can see, lots of um, Really cool things with with Teams Live, but I love the translation. Oh, Marge, can you can everyone else hear me or is it just Marge? You can hear me. OK, cool. I can hear you. I'm sorry. OK, I'm sorry, Marge. The, the um, video different meeting guides. So I think you've seen the... as you go to create new meetings, there's more and more things built out there as far as different meeting types. I think Andrea might have touched on that a little bit, so I'll save time. Intelligent recap going beyond just having transcriptions, attendance, notes, and different things like that. Uh, being able to see, um, you know, exactly within a meeting where your different action items came for, from, what was the additional context around those action items, 
being able to, um, you know, accept or decline if someone assigned you an action item uh, from a meeting that you weren't able to attend. So again, it allows, you know, us to kind of keep up with things even if we aren't actually there. That this is the feature I got ahead of myself here that Dwayne was talking about. So notice someone can be speaking in one language, but being able to read on their side of the screen um, in a different language. And we have this capability within PowerPoint today, but bringing that into Teams. Advanced virtual appointments. Um, I believe that this is likely connected to the changes that we're seeing with, you know, bookings and the SMS messaging and yada, yada, yada. But uh, we're make, trying to make this a bit easier, allow Teams to be that place that you go to for booking your virtual appointments. There will be SMS integration with this as well. Um, and so we need to be there. That, yeah, um, the other advanced thing I webinar to call capability out. is allowing for um, you to actually have overflow or waitlist capability as well. So if someone cancels something, being able to automatically um, jump in and have someone else there. OK, I tried to go really fast. This is not very important. This or it is important. Scratch that from the record. Microsoft Places, Andrea already kind of touched on this earlier. Um, this has to do with, you know, booking meetings in person, remote. How do we create better spaces to have that seamless connection to all of those things? Um, so I won't touch on that. As you can see, I'm really trying to speed through this and, and get to some of Garrett's parts. So I think that Garrett, I'm going to turn it over to you. And this might be a good break for a it part two. Can you can you hear me? Oh, I can't hear you, or I can't hear you, Garrett. Oh, I can hear you, Garrett. It. Sorry. You can hear me. I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Here. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, we may go ahead and break right here. The one thing that I wanted to call out, Victoria, if you could go back to the virtual appointments just to kind of finish up, um, is the uh, what I I was looking for this from my customers when we implemented um, virtual appointments through Teams was the ability to have a custom waiting room. Um, so in telehealth scenarios, a waiting room presence uh, was super important. So we're actually bringing a custom waiting room into the virtual appointment space, which I think is um, super, super exciting. Um, I know it's behind the premium skew, but um, I think it's going to be phenomenal for, for telehealth um, and using and, teams and bookings. Yeah. And Dwayne, since I see your question, I will pause on this then. Yes, places will have to do with room reservations as well. Um, there's going to be integrations with Microsoft Teams rooms as well. So uh, if you're coming to into a room, being able to tell, OK, this person booked a room. Now, did they actually show up for their appointment um, or not? Are they actually using that or not? Um, yes, more more advanced room reservation capability in there as well. And I'm happy to play this little snippet if we want. Um, since we're going to cut it off, unless there's any other questions. Just lower the Is volume, there... maybe a little. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Let's see here. OK, so that was actually me voicing over that video in case anybody was wondering. Um, so that's that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, definitely really, really cool. I'm really excited uh, to see where NTR goes um, with this. Yes, it is very funny that spaces and places are very close to one another and they use them both in this video. Um, but yeah, any other any questions about things that you've seen thus far? We still have a lot, obviously. 
uh, with Viva and some of the um, Intune pieces as well, but any feedback so far on any of the features that you've seen or questions about things you saw at Ignite? I'll say it was a big Ignite for modern work and Microsoft 365. There was just a ton of announcements. So um, apologies we didn't get through everything today, but come back next week. We'll dive into Viva. We'll dive into Intune, security. Um, maybe even um, we'll make Nick happy with some Power Platform announcements thrown in there. Um, there's just so much to cover. So if you haven't registered uh, for Ignite, um, a lot of the sessions have been posted on YouTube and the Ignite site, so you can go catch a lot of the on-demand sessions. Would definitely encourage you to, to go check those out and dive deeper into um, these, these new features and announcements. So thank you all for joining us today um, and come back next week and we'll have more to share.